Like she came to me one day and said, all right, quit my job in March next year. Are we going or not? Estonia, Lithuania, Latvia. Like it's been so good to us. It never let us down. And it never let us down, so we had the idea, or we kind of um, owed it to it, that we said, okay, if, if we're gonna keep it, which we want to, uh, we'll have to put in some more work, some more money even, like, so that's, that's how the, the whole thing started then, yeah. The, the, the steel framework, um, that was a complete shock to us, because there were so many parts that weren't connected to each other anymore because of rust and I was sitting there and I said like that's it get get like get a container we're we're gonna throw it away like there's no chance um, that's ever gonna be be back on the road My name's Colin um, and I'm actually quite lucky. My mom's Irish and she moved to Germany uh, to be together with my dad and they married and everything went well. So I'm actually born in Germany, um, but I guess I got raised as an Irish person. Like I'm quite, quite uh, glad and happy about that. Teresa, <laughs> my partner in crime, my girlfriend, <laughs> since Jeez, we probably five, years five now? maybe six years. We, we, we don't really count. No. We're, like we're, we're glad to have each other. Well, the, the idea of actually purchasing or buying a caravan came up in late 2016 or 17. Yeah. We usually attend a music festival. The year 2017, I think it must have been, we went there and it was lashing rain. So we were there trying to put up the tents and everything like that and everything was just like getting wet and there was no real fun in it. Um, and while we were trying to pitch up the, the tents, a little car, a little white car turned up with a tiny little trailer, camper van, on the back. And out got a woman in her mid-30s, like, and she just parked her car, got out, um, unlocked the door of the caravan, took out more or less the chairs that she had, opened up the fridge, had a cold beer in her hand, like all of that within five minutes. So that was kind of the moment where we said, like, I want that. Yeah. Like, I, I, I'd love something like that, because it's frustrating being in rain all the time. So that's where the idea came from, yeah. After having had the idea that, that we would want a caravan, of course, we were looking for something that would be practical and nice to look at. Like that was kind of, we, we didn't have any experience prior to this caravan. In the end, we narrowed it down to about, I think two or three different Ariba caravans. Found one, well, this particular one then, that was actually up in Hamburg. Yeah, well, we just looked at it and we knew it's exactly what we want. And we, like with the, the way it looked at us, um, just fell in love with it. So yeah. we brought it home. We brought it home and patched it up with uh, actually the help of a friend of ours. Because um, we were completely like, we didn't know what to do, what had to be done, like to bring it back to life. So a good friend of ours um, pitched in and said, all right, I'll show you the basics and you'll be grand to do the rest yourself. So there was a little bit of welding involved. There was a little bit of like new tires and stuff like that, everything to get it back working again. And that took, I'd say three. two or three months like to get it patched up. So it was yeah. road legal again. And like we were really nervous once we took it up to the, to the German TÜV, like to have it inspected. So brought it up then there and they had a look at it and said, grand condition, yeah. there you go. Um, you get the certificate, certificate for it. Um, so we were more than happy to, to have achieved that then, yeah. But once it was patched up, Teresa got the idea and said, well, we've put in the effort and yeah. the, the money and the time. Like, why don't we take it for a trip? Like, maybe around Europe. And we said, yeah, like, we could take a year's holidays, year's leave, like, for six weeks or something like that, um, and just head off. And then kind of got the idea, well, why not three months? Why not four months? So we ended up getting off six months. Um, I did a sabbatical for half a year. Um, Teresa actually quit her job, which was great, because, like, she came to me one day and said, all right, quit my job in March next year. Are we going or not? 
which kind of put me under pressure, which is positive pressure because sometimes I need that. Um, so yeah, we were foot loose like, and, and fancy free and packed up everything that we thought we'd need and just headed off through from Germany to France, to Ireland, back to the Netherlands, Belgium, Netherlands, back into Germany, Denmark, Norway, up to the North Cape, down Finland, into Sweden, and then took the ferry from Sweden over to the Baltic states, um, Estonia, Lithuania, Latvia, um, off into Poland, Czechoslovakia, back into Germany again, and then down to Slovenia. Slovenia yeah. So that was like the most southern point that we could get in the time that yeah. we had. Like, we were never really planning on renovating it in the, um, in, in, with the effort that we put into it now. That all came after the trip where we decided, okay, like it's been so good to us, mm -hmm. it never let us down. And like that was 23,000 kilometers yeah. in, in six months. Like, and there was literally no issue with it. And the roads in the Baltic States or even in Norway, they aren't that great. Like they, they really get to your car, they also get to the caravan. And it never let us down. So we had the idea or we kind of um, owed it to it that we said, okay, if, if we're gonna keep it, which we want to, uh, we'll have to put in some more um, work, some more money even like. So that's, that's how the, the whole thing started then, yeah. Like we didn't have a real plan. What we needed was, since we don't have an X-ray machine, we didn't know what's, what's good, what's not good. We had to disassemble it. And that was literally the first shock. It was definitely the, the first shock. Like we, we, you take out all the furniture, which is grand. Um, and then you start taking away the, the aluminum hull and under the hull you have like the, the, the metal framework, the, the, the steel framework and that was a complete shock to us because there were so many parts that weren't connected to each other anymore because of rust. Um, whereas like I sat there in the evening and I think you came from work and you came by to look and I was sitting there and I said like that's it get get like get a container we're we're gonna throw it away like there's no chance um that's ever gonna be be back on the road yeah that was the first step and then like you, you sleep a few nights and then you kind of get the the encouragement to say okay let's let's do it like there has to be a way to to do it and it just went off from there yeah like the the, the main issue was um neither i nor Teresa are mechanics in in any way um, we both work in the social sector, um, so like we're not completely left-handed or, or two left hands, as they say. Um, but we never had a project that that would be kind of um, similar to what we were getting ourselves into there. Yeah, like once once we had a, the naked framework there, we started um, to to see which parts really have to go, which parts have to be cut out and have to be replaced. Uh, which parts can stay, um, what is the condition of the overall um, um, framework and we just worked bits for bits. A good friend of mine um, who is a very very talented welder um, had the time actually for us just took the time to, to bring us through step by step like he always said like he could do it but he wants us to know how to do it ourselves so it definitely took longer than it should have but it was a great experience for us like um, now, after all these all these years, I'd say like I trust myself doing it again. So once the framework was done, which was a great feeling because it was complete again, it was a whole piece. Um, we started all the rust proofing, and um, once that was done, we started off getting the the axle fit again. Like we actually found a special company in Germany, one of the few that still press in the, the rubber dampeners that you need. So like that's a complete new overhaul axle, but, but still the original one. It's all the little details that come up to the, the insulation, which had to be done new bit by bit. Um, and the, the flooring, which is also with the new insulation. Once that was in, you start thinking about the electrical wiring and where you want to place what. And then of course, a part which I was absolutely <laughs> not good at and I hated it and I would never do it again and I'm glad that Teresa um, took that major part was um, putting in the, the leather 
the leather interior rods exactly I was just not capable of bringing up the the finesse and the time like it was just too much for me so I was, I'm glad like Teresa was there um, who who took that part as, as her major thing um, and then yeah like it sounds easy but then that's done and then you bring back the interior like the furniture um, which is actually quite funny because like there's no 90 degree angle in that caravan whatsoever it's it's all kind of you think you just box them in and you'd be grand but no it's all kind of you need the feeling to it and you have to accept that certain things just are going to be placed the way they are and once that's grooved in you, you're good to go and then after that we we kind of changed all the electric wiring because originally the electric wiring in a caravan actually runs under the caravan and um, goes through the floorboarding which we didn't think was a good idea at the time so there's actually only one hole that we had to drill where the whole electrical wiring from the um, trailer connector goes in which is then all wired in the boxes so we always we'll always have the chance like to get back at the wiring to, to change things which is maybe a little heavier because because you need more length in, in cables but it's just um, it's just not hanging out in on the road more or less so I, I deem it as not safe to, to be honest what we also had to do which um, actually took in a lot of effort was we had to change the complete uh, outside walls the aluminium walls which are actually they're like two sheets like there's a bottom and a top um, sheet that's spanned around it um, the old original sheets there was too much corrosion from the aluminium that kind of works conductive with the steel frame so there was no way we could keep that which is sad but I'm glad that we got it all new same goes for the um, orange pop roof um, the fabric of it like it was just it was just gone like from there was kind of a bit of mold in it so um, that had to be all redone, re re-sewn and we're glad we could keep the, the original um, zippers and everything because they're heavy duty zippers and we tried to use as much of the original substance as we could. Not everything particularly is 100% original but we weren't aiming for that. We were aiming to reconstruct the caravan in a way that we can hopefully, hopefully uh, use it for another 30 or 40 or maybe even 50 years because I think it's got a warm home now and we're kind of glad that it's here yeah so I'm absolutely loving this story I mean you know the fact that you're going to keep it and you know you've got an eye on sustainability but I think we've left everyone in suspense long enough now Colin and Teresa can we have the big unveil of course yeah <laughs> <laughs> it shows the interior <clears throat> So it's not quite finished yet, is it? You say you got, you got exactly. What what has to be said is the only thing that's missing at the moment is the whole propane system, like for the mm -hmm. propane gas. Um, we're missing the cooker and the fridge and the heating, mm -hmm. which will be done in I'd say a couple of one or two months uh, when we've got the time for it to to get the fitting in. But we got lucky. We're going to modernize the whole system. Um, we sadly have to get rid of the old fridge. We're going to put in a new one, which is no problem because the size proportions are the same. The only real problem that we had was with the, the stove at the top. Since this runs on 50 millibars, mm -hmm. but we want to change to the new European legal 30 millibars. Mm -hmm. We needed a, a kind of an idea or a change and we got lucky um, in one of the internet um, forums where rebars are being discussed um, we read about a little company up in Bavaria up in Bavaria who actually is able to keep the old style of the of the stove but change the burners from 50 to 30 millibars so it's going to look the way it has always looked but it's going to be completely um, with new to new like modernized technology Brilliant. which is going to be great and also the only other thing that we will change or have to change is the old heating system mm -hmm. since we've got the bed in the back and the yeah. seating group in the front mm -hmm. the only possible way to put the heater would be here in the um in in the closet which would mean we would have the exhaust i get it yeah, yeah the, the big plastic bit out here 
which we think destroys the whole appearance, the look of the caravan. So we actually went forth and um, kind of saved up a lot of money to be able to buy a, a different heating system, a vario heat, which makes it more flexible for us that we can actually lead the exhaust pipe out to the back where it's supposed to be. So that's all things that have to be arranged now, that have to be put in now. Like interior was everything like that. Um, all of this has been uh, hand sewn by either Teresa or Teresa's mom. Um, so like we, we've overdone all that. Of course, it's not original. Original would be probably orangey, orangey brownie, but we kind of like the green touch to it because the, the combination with the wood color, which is very honey colored and um, the, the, <laughs> the sheep rogue that we have in, uh, just kind of gives a coziness off that, that, that we love. Like we just like sitting in it. Uh, even on a rainy day or even on a sunny day like um, just gives kind of a feeling of home well folks i hope you enjoyed that story of colin and Teresa's restoration of their beautiful little iriba oh uh, thank you very much for, for sharing it with us i hope you enjoyed this video folks as ever if you did enjoy it you know what to do please give us a thumbs up subscribe if you don't already it just leaves me to say from Teresa, from Colin, from Dougal, and from me. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks for, for tuning, tuning in. in. Cool, they're professional, aren't they? <laughs> wow, you, you've done this before. They're very good, aren't they? Very good. They can come again. We'll have them again. Mm -hmm.